Hello my friend, welcome for today's lesson. This is Gerard Massa, the health educator. I welcome you to our channel. If it's your first time here, remember to subscribe so that you do not miss new videos we release every day. On this channel, Gerard Massa, the health educator, we talk about the ovulation calendar, we talk about the ovulation calculator, and we do also give pregnancy advice. Remember to subscribe so that you do not miss any videos we release. I welcome you, my friend, and watch up to the end because there's lots of information, lots of good tips for you today. Have yourself a good time watching this video. I welcome you, my friend. Thank you. What is the cause of lower abdominal pain in pregnancy? Why are you feeling lower abdominal pain when you are pregnant? In this video today, we are going to answer the question asked by many of our subscribers on this channel, Gerard Massa, the health educator, and the question is this, what is the cause of lower abdominal pain in pregnancy? You are pregnant, you are expecting to get pregnant, what is the cause of lower abdominal pain? Without further ado, we shall go straight away to the cause of lower abdominal pain when you are pregnant. The cause of lower abdominal pain when you are pregnant is brought about by many factors. Remember to subscribe to our channel if it's your first time on this channel. Remember to subscribe so that you do not miss new videos we release every day at exactly 17 hours. Gerard Massa, the health educator, is the name of the channel. So, when a woman is pregnant, there are many changes which do happen. The first change is that there's going to be enlargement of your womb. There's going to be enlargement of your uterus. So, as your uterus is enlarging, there's going to be expansion or there's going to be pressure being applied on the muscles which hold your uterus in position. These muscles are called ligaments. Specifically, there's a, a ligament known as the round ligament. So, as the uterus is expanding, the round ligament is also going to be expanding and then as a result, the, there's going to be pain. This pain is also known as round ligament pain. So the first cause of lower abdominal pain in pregnancy is round ligament pain. Round ligament pain can be managed very easily. It's basically warm massages or warm compresses. Remember, you should not do this for a long period of time. So the next thing is that the next cause of lower abdominal pain is that you could be having actually an infection ascending. You could be having a urine tract infection, which probably you got when you actually did urine in a, when you did urinate in a place which is used by many people. So when you are a pregnant mother and then you urinate in a place used by many people, the end result is going to be that you are most likely going to be exposed to infections. These infections are very many. You cannot just sit down and then maybe begin guessing that maybe you have a UTI uh, being brought about by the gonococcus bacteria or being brought about by the trichoma or even by candida. The best thing you need to do, if you have lower abdominal pain, you should go to hospital and then have your doctor assess you and then request for some investigations which will be done. Talking about the tests, talking about the investigations which will be requested by your doctor, the first standard investigation, we normally talk about it on this channel. We've talked about it several times and we should not get tired talking about it. This is known as a pelvic stroke ultrasound scan or a pelvic stroke obstetric ultrasound scan. Specifically, if you are not pregnant, then your doctor will do a pelvic, also known as a gynecologic ultrasound scan. If you are already pregnant, then your doctor will do what we call an obstetric ultrasound scan. The main difference between a pelvic and an obstetric ultrasound scan is that when we are talking about an obstetric ultrasound scan, 
special attention is going to be paid to some species some specific parameters for example the photobiometry the photobiometry involves measurement of your baby of your growing baby measurements will be taken of the diameter of your of the of the abdomen the diameter of the baby's head the length of your uh, baby's humerus the length of your baby's femur and then these measurements are automatically calibrated into the ultrasound scan machine and they correlate with your expected date of delivery also they do correspond with your uh, gestation age the gestation age is the age or it's the age it's actually the age of the pregnancy that's when we say that the pregnancy is at 14 weeks the pregnancy is at 20 weeks or the pregnancy is at term or 40 weeks so if you are pregnant and you are having lower abdominal pain i get this from my clients every day every day it is one of the leading reasons of why pregnant mothers go to hospital lower abdominal pain could be due to round ligament enlargement or ex expansion it could also be due to an ascending urine tract infection when you get an infection we talked about a urine tract infection we said it is brought about by urinating in places which are not clean so when you expose yourself or when you get exposed to a urine tract infection my humble request is this make sure that you have your partner do the testing also make sure that your partner also gets the treatment the main reason is that when you go to hospital and then your doctor does the urine uh, the urine analysis test and then also your doctor does the pelvic ultrasound scan and maybe your pelvic ultrasound scan or obstetric ultrasound scan shows that you have infection how do how do how will your doctor determine that you have an infection on an ultrasound scan there will be a collection there will be collection of free fluid in a particular part in a certain part known as the porch of Douglas this is the part between your uterus and then your rectum there's that small space your doctor will show you on an ultrasound scan so when an ultrasound scan confirms that you have what we call a PID or a pelvic ultrasound scan I mean a PID a pelvic inflammatory disease I'm sorry about that so when your scan comes out and it confirms that you have a PID or a pelvic ultrasound sorry sorry i keep repeating this when the ultrasound scan report confirms that you have a pid now pid i've made two mistakes i'm sorry about that pid simply means a pelvic inflammatory disease pelvic is your waist inflammatory is the body's response to injury and then disease is basically sickness so if you're ultrasound scan shows that you have a pid then your doctor will explain to you show you the results and then of course uh, look at the best recommendations or the best treatment for you remember the drugs you get when you are pregnant these drugs should be the drugs which have been approved to be used in pregnancy if you are pregnant and then you get very strong drugs for example you get very strong antibiotics then there are high chances that these drugs could actually affect your pregnancy so make sure that you talk to your doctor and your doctor will know what exactly needs to be done they will do the tests and then after the testing has been done treatment will be given what you should take from this uh, video is that whenever you are pregnant and you have lower abdominal pain please don't sit at home go to hospital see your doctor who will do these tests and then the best treatment will be given to you the main issue is that or the main complication of untreated urine tract infections is that these infections do progress they can progress and then they can bring about weakening of your cervical canal the cervical canal is the opening into your womb it is the door which opens and then you and and then of course you will be able to go into your womb so basically the cervix is the opening to your womb when you get a urine tract infection or when you get an infection either through urinating in a place used by many people or sexually as an sti or as an as a sexually transmitted infection 
these infections can ascend they can move upwards up to your womb and then and then actually they can ascend first of all up to your cervix and then they will cause inflammation of your cervix inflammation of the cervix is what we call cervicitis you will see this on your report if you have cervicitis or inflammation of your cervix then your doctor will document this on your report and then of course remember that this cervicitis or inflammation or infection in the cervix does not stop there if you do not still get treatment then it can progress up to your womb so if you are pregnant and you have cervicitis get yourself treated because the complication is that the cervix may loosen the cervix may weaken and when your cervix weakens then there are high chances that you could actually end up with a miscarriage or early pregnancy loss before 20 weeks so make sure that you get yourself treated make sure that you get yourself tested this video is for education and information purposes only you are supposed to use this video to get aware to be aware of what is happening to your body so that before you see your doctor you have a prior knowledge of what could be happening do not use this video to diagnose or treat yourself self medication is not allowed it's not good so remember we are talking about lower abdominal pain we've talked about lower abdominal pain in pregnancy so if you are not pregnant and then you are having lower abdominal pain then still you need to go through the routine assessment the routine testing we talked about you need to do the pelvic ultrasound scan you need to do a urine analysis test whereby your urine will be analyzed for infection it will be analyzed for presence of yeast cells it will be analyzed for the acidity also known as the ph or also known as the potential of hydrogen if at all your results come out and then you are showing abnormalities you are showing anomalies you are not supposed to be having lots of leukocytes or white blood cells in your urine but your report shows that you have lots of white blood cells then you will actually have to get treated do not ignore those infections and then next if you do the urine analysis test and it comes out when it is negative then your doctor will most likely go to the next step whereby testing of your urine will be done via a test via a test known as a urine culture and sensitivity whereby your urine will be taken in the lab for at least two to three days depending on your country or where you come from there are some countries whereby these tests are very fast so after testing treatment will be given if it's your first time on our channel remember to subscribe for new videos we release every day if you are looking at getting pregnant you've tried to get pregnant but things are not working out you actually will need to watch our videos on this channel i believe there will be some information you will get which will be very helpful if you would like to schedule a private chat with me just go to my website www.gerardmassadehealtheducator.com and then schedule a consultation we shall be able to talk and then interact and learn more and then also remember to put your trust in god how to get pregnant faster with one fallopian tube how you can boost ovulation with a simple recipe did you know that you can get pregnant faster with one fallopian tube did you know that you can boost ovulation you can boost your chances of getting pregnant with just a simple recipe with something very simple that you have it even in your nearby market yes in this video today we are going to talk about how to get pregnant faster with one fallopian tube and yes if you are new here you are most welcome i welcome you to our lesson for today i welcome you to this channel on this channel we talk about the ovulation calendar we talk about the ovulation calculator and then we do also give pregnancy tips on how you can get pregnant naturally gerard massa the health educator is the name of the channel and i welcome you my friend stay with me watch this video to the end we are going to talk about how you can get pregnant faster with one fallopian tube and how you can boost ovulation with just a very simple recipe it has worked it is working for many couples it will work for you to watch this video to the end and we are going to talk about all this after this short message don't leave
thank you my friend for staying around we are talking about how you can get pregnant faster with one fallopian tube and how you can boost ovulation with just a simple recipe so what is happening is that we shall begin by understanding the ovulation calendar whenever you would like to know whenever you want to know the days you are most likely to get pregnant remember you only have to count from the first day when you saw your periods if you start seeing your periods on maybe the second day of this particular month then remember you can easily get pregnant very easily okay my friend so we are talking about how you can get pregnant faster by by first of all understanding your ovulation calendar the most important thing is that when you are calculating your ovulation day you always and always have to begin from the first day when you have seen your menses and then when you begin counting from the first day when you saw your menses then there's going to be the 14th day that is when you are actually going to be ovulating so if you are a woman out there and you have a regular cycle and even if your cycle is irregular still you just have to pick out a particular month which is really okay which is which has been consistent and then uh, you basically have to count from the first day when you saw your menses count up to the 14th day when we talk about your cycle or your menstrual cycle being regular specifically we are talking about knowing that the menstrual cycle is divided into two phases we have the follicular phase and then we do also have the luteal phase so when you have your periods on day one then you see your periods on day two and then day three what you need to do is basically count from the first day you saw your periods that is day one and then count up to the 14th day and on the 14th day that is when you are going to be ovulating that is when you are most likely to be ovulating so what happens is that the three days leading to ovulation during the three days leading to ovulation there's a release of a hormone this hormone is known as luteinizing hormone also abbreviated as lh this hormone stimulates the whole process of rupture so what is happening is that when you see your message on day one then there's going to be a release of a hormone known as luteinizing hormone and this hormone is specifically responsible for the rupture of a mature graphian follicle a mature graphian follicle is basically a mature egg so when we take a look at this diagram you realize that the whole of this is what we call the reproductive system this is the reproductive system of a woman it has actually several parts but we shall talk about them in a nutshell we have one ovary this side and then another ovary and then we do also have the fallopian tubes and then we do also have the fallopian tubes attached around here and also these ligaments which support the ovaries so the whole of this is basically layers of tissue it's known as the myometrium and then the outer thin layer is what we call the perimetrium or the epimetrium and then we have the inner layer which is known as the endometrium what happens is that when an egg has been released the, it's going to grow when an egg when an egg has been when a woman has just seen her menses when a woman has just seen her menstrual cycle or when a woman has just seen her periods there's going to be growth of these eggs from a very small size and then go it goes on growing until it matures so the first first stages when the egg is growing basically this is known as okay then the first first eggs the first stages when the egg has just started growing it is known as the follicular phase follicular comes from the word follicle whereby there's growth of a small egg it goes on growing until it matures into a ripe egg known as the graphian follicle the whole process of maturation the whole process of growth of this egg until it reaches this point of being very mature ready to be released 
this whole process is supported and it is stimulated by a hormone known as luteinizing hormone working together with another hormone also known as estrogen but luteinizing hormone is the most most important hormone here it plays a very big role in helping the maturation and then the rupture of this mature egg when this mature egg ruptures this is what we call ovulation and normally there will be semen released and this semen can come in the male sperms can come in and then they can meet around here then fertilization can take so thank you once again my friend we are proceeding with the whole process of ovulation and we have said that when the egg has been released on the 14th day basically this is what we call the day of ovulation or the day when you are most likely to get pregnant but still the three to four days leading to ovulation still you can get pregnant having talked about this we are going to answer our question is it possible for a woman to get pregnant when they have only one fallopian tube the answer is yes it is very possible the most important thing you have to do is you need to understand your ovulation calendar and then also you need to understand that when the fallopian tube is not blocked and the fallopian tube does not have any issues with maybe fluid inside it then there are high chances that you can easily and easily get pregnant what you need to do or what you need to know is that the fallopian tubes should be patent or they should be open it is very very easy for a woman with a fallopian tube which is open to get pregnant as long as the tubes are open and then as long as this particular client with as long as this particular woman is actually ovulating very well so when you are a woman and you ovulate very well and you have one fallopian tube which is not blocked then you can easily get pregnant though in most cases there are times when your fallopian tubes may be blocked still this has to be confirmed by your doctor whereby an investigation will be done this investigation is known as the hsg or the hysterosalpingogram it's an examination whereby your fallopian tubes will be analyzed under a special technique and when the report comes out that your tube is blocked unblocking can be done in hospital so we are talking about how to get pregnant faster with one fallopian tube and how to boost ovulation naturally with just a simple recipe and we have said that during the process of ovulation as long as a woman is ovulating very well until the 14th day she can always get pregnant faster naturally and then the other most important thing is that you need to understand how your cycle runs you need to understand that if you are a woman and you have a cycle that runs for 22 days then the days you are ovulating are going to be between day 6 and day 10 and then if you are a woman and you your cycle runs for 24 days then the days of ovulation are on day 8 and day 12 all together until when you reach 45 days still the days of ovulation are between the 26th and the 30th day so having known all that we we, we about the, met, the menstrual cycle and then the calendar method we are going to talk about one simple recipe that can help you get pregnant faster and this is what we call citrus fruits citrus fruits are very very important it's actually very important because it contains lots of vitamin c which is very important it is very key in handling and it acts as an antioxidant and it basically works on free radicals in your body but in fertility in managing fertility cases it actually do boost fertility because it contains a very important element it contains a very important substance known as polyamine putrescine polyamine putrescine is very important because it has been known to boost egg quality and then also it has been known to boost sperm quality so if you are a woman if you are a couple trying to get pregnant make sure that you consume some citrus fruits because they do contain polyamine putrescine and then also they do contain uh, they actually contain vitamin c but in this particular case the polyamine 
putrescine is very very important because it boosts sperm quality and then also it boosts egg quality we have been talking about how to get pregnant faster with one fallopian tube and we have said that you just have to make sure that the fallopian tube is not blocked and then you should be ovulating very well if you are not ovulating very well and the fallopian tube you have is actually blocked then it may be a bit difficult to get pregnant faster the other thing is that how to boost the ovulation basically faster you basically have to go on and then take lots of citrus fruits because they do contain polyamine putrescine and then also polyamine putrescine has been known to boost sperm quality and egg quality according to a study which was done by dr murphy polyamine putrescine is known to boost sperm quality and egg quality gerard massa the health educator is the name of the channel i welcome you my friend i thank you for staying with me for this while and i hope you have learned something in today's video what you need to take home is that you should take lots of citrus fruits if you are a couple trying to get pregnant and then the next thing is you should know that you can get pregnant easily even if you have one fallopian tube as long as you are ovulating well and then as long as your fallopian tube is open you can connect with me on my whatsapp numbers they are just around the corner down here on the right side you can connect with me in case you have any questions also remember but what is a baffling cyst in this video today we are going to talk about the baffling cyst hello my friend i welcome you to our channel gerard massa the health educator on this channel we talk about the ovulation calendar we do talk about the ovulation calculator and we do answer all your questions in regards to women's health ask all your questions down below in the comments i will answer all those questions personally remember to subscribe so that you watch new videos we release every day i welcome you my friend for today's lesson welcome for today's lesson be attentive watch the video up to the end and you are going to benefit a lot would you like to get pregnant faster would you like to get pregnant naturally then this video is for you by the end of this video you are going to know what a baffling cyst is and why what is a baffling cyst and how best it can be treated so without further ado we shall be define a baffling cyst and we shall say that a baffling cyst is called a duct cyst and it is a fluid filled sac just inside the opening of a woman's vagina so what is happening is that when you are a woman and you have a small swelling which is filled with fluid just inside at the opening of your private parts then this could be a baffling cyst so we are going to look at the symptoms of a baffling cyst you may feel a soft painless lump this does not usually cause any problems but if the cyst grows very large it can become noticeable and even uncomfortable so you may also feel pain in the skin surrounding the vagina that is the outer skin known as the vulva when you walk and then even when you sit down and this pain increases when you have sex so the first symptom is that you are going to feel a soft painless lamp which is just at the opening of your vagina the cyst can sometimes affect the outer pair of lips surrounding the vagina known as the labia majora and specifically one side may be very very swollen if the cyst becomes infected it can cause a painful collection of pus known as abscess to develop in one of the baffling glands signs of an abscess include the affected area becoming red swollen tender and even hot remember to subscribe for new videos we release every day and in this video today we are talking about the baffling cyst so if you are a woman and you have a high body temperature ranging from 37 38 even going to 39 and you have a small swelling just at the opening of your private parts then this could be a baffling cyst remember if the temperature is rising it means that the infection or it means that the swelling is becoming septic or it is actually getting microorganisms 
multiplying and going into your bloodstream and you should see your doctor immediately if you are a woman and you have a small swelling just at the opening of your private parts so small buffalin cysts are sometimes found during a routine cervical screening test this could be a test for cancer but still your doctor or your midwife will see a small swelling just at the opening of your private parts this examination may be carried out for another reason but just as they are examining you for maybe cancer of the cervix they may discover that you have what we call a buffalinis cyst next is that you can also develop a lump in the area around your vagina so the diagnosis has to be made by your doctor in some cases your doctor may recommend that you have a biopsy whereby a small piece of tissue is got from that swelling using a special needle known as a finac needle or a fine needle aspirator it is very very important for this to be taken because sometimes you may think that it is a normal thing but you may actually think that it's not really harmful but it can easily develop into something as serious as valvo cancer also known as buffalin's gland cancer what are the causes of buffalin's cyst what are the causes of buffalin's cysts the buffalin's glands are a pair of pea-sized glands found just behind either side of the lips of your vagina so these are a pair of pea-sized glands meaning that they are just around the size of p that is p e a so they are just the size of that p uh, uh, and when i talk about p i'm meaning uh, these peas which are actually uh, cow peas these peas which are eatable so buffalin's glands are around that size that is p e a so what is happening is that the glands are not usually noticeable because they rarely become larger than one centimeter across the buffalin's gland secret fluid that acts as a lubricant during sex so the main function of the buffalin's glands is that they secrete fluid that acts as a lubricant during sex the fluid travels down tiny tubes called ducts into the vagina if the ducts become blocked they can fill with fluid and expand to form what we call a fluid filled cyst also known as the buffalin's cysts it is often not known why the ducts become blocked but some cases are linked to STIs or sexually transmitted infections for example chlamydia gonorrhea and even other infections brought about by E coli or Escherichia coli how are buffalin's cysts treated if you do not have noticeable symptoms if you do not have noticeable symptoms it's unlikely that you will need treatment so in this video we are talking about buffalin cysts we have talked about how they present we've said that they are normally uh, they, they begin from the buffalin's glands and the buffalin's glands are around the size of p uh, that is p e a uh, cow peas and then normally when they get blocked then they when, when they do get blocked then it means they are going to be filled up with fluid and this is what we call the buffalin's uh, cysts if the cyst is painful your doctor may recommend some simple self-care measures such as soaking the cyst in warm water several times a day for three to four days and taking painkillers you can buy from your pharmacy or a nearby hospital if these painkillers do not help relieve if you apply the warm compresses and then you do even take the painkillers like acetaminophen and they do not help then several treatments are available to treat uh, the buffalin cysts so it is very very important that when you have a buffalin cyst you should be able to get treatment and the best way of preventing buffalin cysts is that you should 
practice safe sex that is you should use a condom whenever you have sex and also you should be having sex with only one person one person who is trusted thank you one thank you once again my friend for watching our video Gerard Massa the health educator is the name of the channel and in this video today we have talked about the buffalo cysts and we have said that these are swellings which become of the buffalo gland, glands and normally they happen due to blockage i welcome you my friend thank you for watching today's video remember to subscribe if you are new here remember to check us our videos tomorrow we shall be releasing more videos at exactly 17 hours thank you for today's lesson and have yourself a fantastic and healthy day Bye bye. Thank you, my friend, for attending today's lesson. I hope you have learned something. And please, if you have any questions in regards to what we've just discussed, leave your questions in the comments. Ask me your questions. I will answer all your questions. On this channel, Gerard Massa, the health educator, I talk about women's health. Have yourself a fantastic and healthy day. And may God bless us all. Bye bye to subscribe for new videos we release every day have yourself a fantastic and healthy day and may god bless us all bye bye thank you my friend for attending today's lesson i hope you have learned something and please if you have any questions in regards to what we've just discussed leave your questions in the comments ask me your questions i will answer all your questions on this channel gerard massa the health educator i talk about women's health have yourself a fantastic and healthy day and may god bless us all bye bye